Do you have a copy of your favourite game that you just love playing but you've discovered it doesn't work on modern hardware? And Steam doesn't have it? Or GOG? So what are you going to do? Well, my solution is this. This decrepit old Dell. You want to find out more? Let's get Ah, summertime. Apparently the living is easy. Well, not for me. I don't like the heat, the sun, I have hay fever. In short, I can't wait for winter. However, the tech department makes a brilliant place to wait it out. It's cool in here, it's always cool in here. And this year, I have two months off from work, so I am going to spend it in Summerfest. It's a new thing I'm trying because, well, frankly, I'm an idiot. But if you're watching this channel, you already know that. Today, however, I want to play this game. This is No One Lives Forever. Released in 2000 by Sierra and then Fox Interactive and Electronic Arts and a bunch of other people, eventually this game went out of print. It's not available anywhere on Steam or GOG because no one actually knows who owns the rights. Which means the only way to play it is with this original copy. Now unfortunately, this requires Windows 7 32-bit or Windows Vista 32-bit or even Windows XP 32-bit. The common theme is 32-bit. None of my modern systems will run it because everything runs on 64-bit these days. So that left me with a bit of a quandary. What to do? Fortunately, I have this. This is my old Dell machine. It's a Dell Inspiron 530 apparently. I bought this back in 2008, uh, mostly because I just needed to fill a hole in my um, computing history. It, I just needed a computer, it was there, it was cheap. Problem is, it's not lasted well. You may notice this button is certainly not original. Um, this I don't think it's supposed to do that, but it's a fairly well together, well put together machine, but it needs some work. So today we're going to recommission this and uh, hopefully get it back working so I can spend some time pretending to be this super sexy 60s spy. My name is Jess B. This is my tech department. Los get. Ah, the Dell Inspiron 530. It was neither inspirational or actually terribly good, but it did actually fill a gap in my computer history when I needed it. This particular machine was built in 2008, shipped with Windows Vista and came with a Core 2 Duo quad-core processor, a Q6600, and uh, yeah, it, you, I used it pretty much all the time. As you can see, it's had some changes over the years. I'm pretty sure that power supply is not original, but the rest of it is fairly there, including the graphics card. Now, I'm not gonna lie, um, this machine has been beaten up a little bit. It's moved house twice, moved continents once, and uh, yeah, it's probably not in the best condition it could be. Let's take a look inside, shall we? Now, up until recently, this machine was working. I was using it to run a CNC machine, as well as design a few other bits and pieces. As you can see, it's covered in dust, uh, yeah, that's the original cooler, and um, yeah, if the hard drive hadn't failed on this, I think I'd probably still be using it for that CNC machine. But it has failed, which means I can now replace everything in here, or at least give it a good clean, get a new hard drive in there, and uh, hopefully we can be playing No One Lives Forever in no time soon. So let's start stripping the case. First, I need to get rid of that front cover with the um, <coughs> broken button. Now the button itself was disconnected by me because at one point this was one of three machines I used to run a full size flight simulator and I wanted to be able to switch it on without having to reach around some bizarre area so I moved the button. Of course the flight simulator is no more and now it didn't have a button so I actually had to reconnect whatever I could find and this was how I did it. With the button released though, I can now take the front cover away and move on to the next pressing thing, which is getting that power supply out of there. Oh, and boy, what a gem of a power supply it is. 
Now you can tell it's good quality by its bright gold color. Nothing sells this is a quality machine better than a bright gold cover on something you usually don't see. Also, it's held in by two, two screws. That's, that's not good. That's not good. With a little bit of jiggling around, I managed to get the power supply out and let's take a look at our wonderful bright gold power supply. It's, um, oh look, it says Pentium 4 on it. It's a 450 watt power supply and it weighs about as much as a tiny pebble you'd find on a beach. This is obviously a quality power supply, yay. Nevertheless, let's push on and uh, let's get this graphics card out of there. We have to take away the PCI lock first. And the GPU is gone. And then it's just a matter of disconnecting the rest of the plugs and unscrewing that motherboard, which alarmingly does not have all its screws. Again, this is purely down to me. I have obviously been in here and uh, yeah, I've been doing stuff to this. To get the motherboard out, you actually have to take away the case fan because it's just not enough room inside this Dell machine to lift that away with the case fan in place. However, with everything out of the way, we can now sort out the case. And oh, is it dusty? Yes. Yes, it is. To give it the best clean possible, I get try and get this back panel off, but it's putting up a bit of a fight. Now, I'll be honest, I don't think there's anything worth getting this off for. Really, there's not going to be much room for me to do any cable management behind this panel. It was 2008 and all, and what you got is what you got. But however, I do get the panel off, and um, yeah, now we can get in there and get a bit of a damp cloth and uh, get the dust out. Oh, and it is so dusty, but it's actually not as bad as some of the Apple power max i've had if i'm honest g5 i'm looking at you but as i dust and clean you can see actually the dell machine there's not much to it and weirdly enough this is actually a better dell machine than some of the uh, later models i mean you buy a dell machine today i mean why you do that i don't know but if you buy a dell machine today it, the design is infinitely more locked down than this one was the card really needs a little clean and by the looks of it, a screw to hold it in. Um, surprisingly, there are four USB ports on the front there. Now, one thing I will want to check is that thermal paste because I will put money on the fact that that is, well, knackered. There's no other way word for it. It's knackered. It was put in there in 2008. It's going to be a little bit solid. So let's get this... Um, Let's call it a cooler off and um, yeah, let's sort out that thermal paste. With the cooler out of the way, it's now fairly simple to remove the old thermal paste. It is a little crusty and apparently it has got everywhere. So I think there was probably more on here than there should have been. Best thing to do, let's pop that processor out and gently clean it, dropping it carefully, of course. Right. But as you can see, it's kind of got around the edge of the processor and I, I don't really want it there. So I'm just going to gently clean that out and if I can get in behind the frame that holds it in place to make sure that we get any excess out from in there. Once I'm happy with it, we're going to put the processor back in, lock it back into place and then we can turn our attention to the cooler, which also, like the processor, just needs a gentle clean to remove the old dried out thermal paste. It's now time for a fresh coat of thermal paste and I'm going to use some Arctic MX4 for this processor. And I'm taking a devil may care attitude as to where I put it. Look guys, before you get on the internet comment section there and uh, condemn me, this is a machine that's going to be used incredibly lightly and it's going to be fine. Now to get the cooler on, I'm going to adjust both sides equally, so top left, bottom right, and then vice versa. Or scratch that, reverse it for whatever I just did. Either way, I start in opposite corners. Once that is done, we can now consider putting it back into the case. Well, actually, we're going to swap out that memory. Originally, it would have come with two gigabyte of memory. I am swapping out that stick, which also was not original, for something a little more grand. Now, as it happens, I have boxes of RAM lying around the place, and I have a wonderful set of low-profile 
two gigabyte sticks, which will take this machine up to a solid eight gigabyte. Uh, assuming I can find it. Any minute now. Oh, wait, wait. No, no, no. Thought I had it. Thought I had it. That, that, that's the one you took out, honey. That, that's the one you took out. Oh, you do. And there we are. I actually do have it. So I bought these little um, sticks actually from a second-hand store. They were just on the counter there for 99 cents a piece. I bought about 30 years worth. And um, yeah, have the testing. Found a fair few that fitted. And these four sticks are matching and they will be perfect for our little Vista machine. At eight gigabytes, this is probably more than any Vista machine probably should have had, but it'll also mean that we're kind of okay to run whatever we like. Right, now we have to reassemble the machine. This is probably the easiest part of it, I'm gonna say. It's just a matter of refitting everything we've taken out and adding a few extra screws because there were quite a few that were missing. Which, um, yeah, is gonna be fun. Next up is time to replace that broken hard drive. Originally this machine sported a 500 gig drive but that has long since been repurposed for other machines. Looking around the tech department however I did find an old 80 gig drive that I found on a local Tausch Tisch. Uh, a Tausch Tisch is like a community drop off point for things you don't need but may be useful to someone else. Well this 80 gig hard drive is certainly useful to me uh, although I may swap it out in the future for an SSD but we'll see. It's not just the hard drive that needs replacing it seems, as the machine's original DVD drive has also gone missing. Again I look around the tech department and find this black DVD drive that matches the original. Though once the front cover's on, you'll never see it. Things start to come together a bit quicker now, and that's made easier by the fact that Dell helpfully colour coded the cables to the port. Finally, it's time for the SATA cables, and I find a nice set of black and white ones, which is in keeping with the tech department itself. Again, this is made fairly easy, although I'll be honest, getting some of those cables in, it's a little tricky in places. I don't know what it is with SATA, but my goodness, they could be a pain. Finally, it's time for the gold standard power supply to be refitted. It's a little awkward and um, yeah, honestly, I may change this out as well at some point, although this machine's never gonna see heavy usage. So hopefully it won't explode, we'll see. With the main components back in, it's time for the odd upgrade, in this case, in the shape of a Sound Blaster Order G2 card. Now, I know this machine had this card working at some point, so I'm not too worried that plugging it in is going to cause any issues. Then it's in with the ATI card, I leave the parallel card in place, and then it's back on with the PCI lock, and uh, we're almost there. Then it's time to install Vista. Oh, deep joy. Just the fan to go and this machine is complete.
Right, moment of truth time. It's back together, it's cleaned up, TV's on, let's see if it'll work. The machine powers up with no problem and I'm able to use the original Windows Vista restore disk that came with the Dell to bring it back to life. I'll tell you what though, I haven't really missed this screen if I'm honest. After what feels like an age, I'm finally at the Windows desktop and it's time to see if no one lives forever, really does live forever. Okay, moment of truth, it's installed, will it play? Oh, we've got a splash screen. Intelligence has discovered that the American ambassador to West Germany, Morris Monroe, is marked for execution by an organization calling itself H-A-R-M, or HARM. The assassination attempt is expected to come on the last day of Monroe's upcoming holiday in Morocco, as he is leaving his hotel. There will likely be multiple assailants. It is imperative that Monroe survive the attack. Be warned, though, that the ambassador is extremely nearsighted and almost deaf so you won't be able to rely on him to realize that he's in danger. You will be positioned in a residential building across the street from the hotel. Your job is to pick off the assassins before they liquidate Monroe. So, are you enjoying yourself here? In mm -hmm. Would you like me to call out the targets for you? I think we can manage, don't you? I can handle this on my own, thank you. Oh, it's so old school. I want to go ah, home. There we go. Bye bye. I don't like it here. Why not? It's so foreign. Well, it is a foreign country. I know it is. But Canada's a foreign country, too. It's foreign. But you have a lot of fun if you just stop worrying. You think so? Sure. Maybe you're right. Of course I'm right. Let's walk down to the Medina and see some sights. One thing I really loved about this game is its sense of humour. Well, there we have it. Kate Archer is back on my screen and I couldn't be happier. And on top of that, I got this old Dell machine working again and it will be a jumping platform for the rest of the old games I have that simply don't work on Windows 10. Now, I'm not quite finished with this old Dell machine. I kind of feel it needs a bit of a makeover. Because 
well, the case is not in great condition. And I'm curious, what would you do? Given the 60s spy theme I have here, I'm thinking Paisley. A little Paisley swirl maybe, but I think that may be well beyond my uh, abilities. Still, I think a new paint job would suit the machine. On top of that, there are plenty of other games I have in the tech department that don't work on more modern systems, so having this old Vista machine running is great. In the meantime, all that's left to say is, here are our socials. Do consider giving us a like if you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate it, and consider subscribing if you enjoy this brand of nonsense. All that's left to say is, thank you so much for watching, I will see you next time, and when it comes to all technology, remember to rediscover, reconnect, and uh, replay some classic games, like this. Cheers!